Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the public hearing, the commission where we investigate and get to the bottom of where this damn virus came from. I'm just playing. This is RPT, Red Pill Tamale, season number five, season finale, episode number 60. It is June 9th, 2021. I am your host, Chingo Blingo, with the big tamarindo. Shout out to producer Rob. What up, everybody? The You're glue. coming in hot today. The glue that holds it all together. Guys, Chingo's coming in hot. This is going to be a good one. I had to take a cold shower. That's how hot I was coming in. Ooh. That's how hot I was coming in. You know, humid hot. Humid hot? Humid hot. Yeah. Houston, Texas, humid hot. It's sticky AF. Man, we just did a pop-up the other day. I almost passed out. Yo, I, well, hopefully we'll get into it. You look like you were on stage doing your third straight hour of comedy. Man... I'm going to tell you about that. You but I am like on Bruce, tour. Bruce with a towel around your neck. Man, it was terrible. I am on tour right now. Uh, we are doing freedom rallies. Okay, it's a comedy tour. Freedom of speech tour. We are headed to California, baby. July 14th, Ontario, California. July 15th, Oxnard, California. August 11th, Irvine, Califas. August 18th, San Jose, California. August 27th through the 29th, we're hitting Denver, Colorado. Uh, back to the West Coast. September 15th, Brea, California. And then we bring on home to Texas, Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th, San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th. And then we wrap it up in Houston, November 5th through the 7th. Get your tickets and your info right now. Take action. Don't get sold out. Chingobling.com. Because as everything is unraveling, as the truth is coming out, as Biden's legitimacy is being questioned by the second we're being vindicated, man. Yeah. We, were, we were called crazy sellout, coconut trumpers, self-hating, wannabe white, this, that, and the third, just because we were America first and just because we wanted the Democrat Party to earn our vote. The way in McAllen, man, then people got tired of, uh, of uh, 100 years of voting Democrat for the mayor. It's literally been 100 years. Yeah. And, and Hillary won that county by a landslide. Biden won that county by 17%. And now we have this mayor, uh, Javier Villalobos, I believe his name. Yeah, I believe. And um, they went, they did grassroots. They were going door to door, talking to the people. And they won. So I know some people, I posted about it. Some people are trying to discredit it. Like, oh, it's not even a big deal. It's just a mayor race. But I've been down there. Mm -hmm. I've talked to people. And so many people, there's just a, a shift Overall, it's just working class people. They're not really buying what the Dems are selling mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, I kind of want to touch on that real quick before we get into the rest of the stuff. Uh, Sagar uh, and um, Crystal Ball, they left oh. the Hill, right? Oh, they yeah, did the yeah. Hill Rising. Now they're doing their own show called Breaking Points. And they did a, a whole little clip on this where they're talking about are the Democrats in trouble in the future when it comes to, you know, the, the federalized, like the national debate of who's going to win and who's in charge and whatever. And some of the points I made were interesting points were that I think Crystal Ball had said that local politics are dead. Mm. And it's kind of true because people haven't really paid any attention to local politics. And I, I, don't, know how I, can, and I don't know how long I can remember, right? Mm -hmm. And Sager's argument was that if, if conservatives want to take back a federal command of, of like, you know, regulating you know, laws in the country, it's where it's going to have to take, take place, right? Because the locals are the ones sending your representatives to D.C., right? Mm. And... If you can look outside, and the whole, the whole, like the the whole thing tied into a bow was, if you stop paying attention to this culture war and giving it that much more gas, then you can focus on the important actual issues. Because nope, they didn't run on anything this this campaign, right? There was nothing that said we're going to make your life incrementally better in this segment at all or in the sector or whatever. Mm -hmm. They just ran on <laughs> Orange Man Bad, you know, the the hoaxes, and literally didn't give any voter any glimpse of change for any. They they could have at least ran on hope and change part two. Hope and Change 2.0 would have been better than what they ran on. And if you look at the, the mainstream, you know, leftist media like MSNBC and them, they're not even talking about Joe Biden. Look at his policies. Look at all the work they're doing. This is what they're doing. They're doing a temper tantrum about these forensic audits. They're just like, ah, uh, this is it's threatening our democracy. We already counted the votes. Why y'all got to go with a fine tooth comb and yeah. stop? And, and they're, you know, they're not even they're just bringing up Trump. They're not talking about, hey, remember, guys, remember when Biden said, look at this job report. L look at this economy. There's no inflation in sight. Look at what Kamala's doing. Like, look at this border crisis getting cleaned up. They can't. They're avoiding all the crises by focusing on Trump and focusing on a whole bunch of bullshit. And these are the channels 
that propped up Saint Fauci, never asked the tough questions. And I can't wait to get into that, boy. I got, ooh, I got some, I got some stuff on that. Look at that, I got to scratch my neck. That's how, that's how good this is. Truth dope. This Damn. is a good little truth crack kicking in right here. Uh, real quick also, I get people to ask about show, like upcoming shows and mm-hmm. ticket links. Mm-hmm. Sh- we should probably say that when ticket links become available, they go up online. Like if they're not on the website yet, it's because you don't have the link yet for tickets. It's not that it's sold out. It's just that we don't have the link yet, right? And sometimes we got to like go and Google like, okay, is the Denver link up yet? Yeah. You know, go check their website. Okay. If it's up, then I'll put it on my site. But, um, but yes. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to throw it out there in case people didn't know, like if it's not up there yet, it will be up there when they're available. And I guess my biggest excuse is, <laughs> is 2020 was a curveball. Yeah. And a lot of these clubs, man, they're, they're hiring. They're trying to staff their stuff. They're trying to like open up. So it just seems like everybody in the stand-up comedy industry is like getting back in the groove. Almost like, uh, they're going to shut us down again. Like, yeah. What's our government? What's our local representatives? What's right. our county judge? What's our mayor? What's our governor going to say? And people like to be like, uh, it's a mayoral race. It's not even about blue or red. It's like, really? Because 2020 should have taught you that these people operate according to party lines. And they look at like, okay, Dems are locking everything down. All right, cool. We, I'm, I'm going to lock everything down too. Yeah, and I guess we can kind of kick off with that, right? I mean, we were already talking about it, the, the McCallum mayoral race. Mm-hmm. The way some people, and not very many, but a few of them just try to completely dismiss it. Yeah. It was people, a little interesting. They're like, not everyone voted, Chingo, like 2% of the population. Da, da, da. I'm like, I didn't say everybody voted. I'm just saying it looks pretty significant to me. Yeah. You know, and it so. was a, I believe it was a runoff that they won. Yeah, it was like five candidates. Yeah, and then it kept narrowing down. So that was really important. So whoever did vote, like the people that really wanted to vote, got out there and voted. Everybody yeah. else, like you snooze, you lose. I, I guess. Mean, in what election is it to where everybody votes? Nobody said, "Man, look at what's going on in, in McAllen." Yeah. Everybody voted for this. No, it's just of those that voted, this is who won. Hey, but in this 2020 election, more people than ever voted for the most popular president. That man got more votes than Obama and everybody else. 81 million votes in a handful of counties. Come on, man. In a handful of counties. (laughs) Not like thousands of counties. Bro, what can we dive into this Wuhan, bro? Yeah, this should be emails 2.0 or emails part two. Um, because you sent me some sh- what was it, uh, Saturday night? The Peter uh, Dazig like Peter URL, Dazig, Peter Dazig with all com. that, yeah. Um, Dora so, la sopa. Mm-hmm, I was going through that, which is a very it's a lot of information, it's a, a ton. Lot of stuff. It was like a term paper. I'm like, damn, they got the timeline on here, yeah. And there's, I think, there's more emails as well to you know, everybody can sift through. I want to know where you're at because it looked like you were consuming Man, quite a bit. It's this a, weekend. okay, check this out, y'all. A trigger warning. Because some of this shit don't even look good on Trump. But we're going to get to that part. All right. Before we talk about forensic audits and all that shit, check this out, bro. And keep in mind, we're on YouTube. This is the public episode. So, so let me... Uh, I'm a tiptoe. Tiptoe. Tip dance. And also, if the episode doesn't stay up, you know why. I'm going to be like, arguably, hypothetically, yeah. theoretically. So check this out, man. There's a lady named um, Sherry Markson. Sh- Sherry Markson. She's on Twitter. She does a lot of stuff with Sky News. The, she's from Australia. It's a good resource. So it's S H A R R I Markson, M A R K S O N. Hit her up on Twitter. Check this out, bro. She's got a book coming out under uh, Harper Collins in September. You could pre order it now. I would love to get her on the show. Uh, she's busy promoting her book, but check this out. Her book is called What Really Happened in Wuhan. Some of the stuff I heard her mention in interviews is that you have the, the PLA. Mm. The uh, People's Liberation Army. This is the Chinese military. And the CCP, that's the party, you know, that runs China. Um, you know, they like to do stuff in the bioweapon uh, area. Yeah. You know, I'm, we're on YouTube, so I'm, I'm a tip dance, tap dance. Um, I know y'all have heard a lot of these names, like Dr. Xi Zeng Li, you know, the Batwoman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know y'all have heard of the NIH, the National Institute of Health. And how there were there were some research grants and tax your hard earned taxpayer dollars getting moved around through Eco Health, which is a uh, organization that's run by Peter Daszak. Mm-hmm. And look into him, man. Go to peterdaszak.com. Somebody made that a website, and toda la sopa's on there. So this is what we know. In February 2020, remember this is at the beginning, just before the lockdown. Yes, February 2020. Uh, the scientists from over there, from the CCP, had already put in his application for a patent for a coronavirus vaccine. This is in February 2020, all right? Which 
could let you, uh, you could speculate that they had already been working on some shit and they already knew some shit was popping off and they had already been working on a quote unquote cure. Um, so Mike Pompeo, he was, uh, what was he? State department? What was, I forget his exact title in, in the Trump administration. Yeah. I don't remember. So he was up there, big wig, Mike Pompeo and a lot of people over there from Trump's administration, like Dr. Peter Navarro and a lot of Trump's advisors were wanting to look into this lab leak theory, right? They weren't buying this wet market thing. They wanted to do a commission and investigate it. Director of the CIA. Okay. The who? The CIA? Pompeo, yeah. Okay. So then Mike Pompeo was going through some of his intelligence people saying, hey, we need to look into this grant, gain, of func- gain of function research stuff. What's going on with this eco health, this NIH, and the Wuhan Institute of, of Virology? You know, basically... Is this a bioweapon? Is the CCP involved? Like, was this a product of gain of function uh, research where you take a virus and you juice it up and you figure out how to make it transmissible to humans, et cetera? Well, all his intelligence people were telling Mike Pompeo, nah, man, you tripping, bro. We already talked to the scientists, all these big wig scientists. They already done told us nothing to see here. It's not a possibility. It did not leak from any of these four labs we have over there where where the PLA is involved and and the CCP and and these scientists are, are, you know, working for the government. Nothing to see here. So they they kept telling Mike Pompeo, no, man, uh, you barking up the wrong tree. Nothing to see here. So these scientists, uh, arguably, maybe some people would theorize that perhaps they were compromised. Perhaps there was a conflict of interest. Um, there was even an article in The Lancet, which is like, a, I think, a British scientific uh, magazine that had a lot of credibility up until recently. Yeah. And I think a hundred and something scientists signed a name on it. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm putting my name on that article. Yeah, this shit didn't come out in no lab. And everybody was like, that way the mainstream media could be like, but The Lancet and yeah. the scientists already, <laughs> you guys are wacky fringy conspiracy theorists it came from bat soup caldo de pinche murciélago un menudo de murciélago el pinche batman so they don't talk mike pompeo out of it now here's where i right, trigger warning all my trumpers out there check this out so dr peter navarro had an idea he's part of, he was part of uh, trump's uh you know cabinet he said we need to do a commission the same way they do, like when, they, when it was a BP oil spill, mm-hmm. when you had the JFK assassination, when you had Pearl Harbor, you're supposed to have a commission and have a public hearing and you grill motherfuckers. Hey, man, sit in that chair. This ain't MSNBC, bro. We're not going to softball question you. Uh, Fauci, why, when this shit was spreading all over the world in January, February, March, why, if you were part, if you're, if you're the highest paid official in the government, and you're one of Trump's health advisors, science, whatever, you're, you're in, the, in the cabinet. Why didn't you pull Trump aside? Hey, player. Hey, man, check this out, man. I might be in some trouble. I just want to holler at you. Maybe you could have my back. Look, bro, um, Obama canceled this gain of function stuff, and, and I kind of snuck it back in. And I, I just want to let you know, maybe, perhaps, you know, it's a couple labs over there. We actually working on something similar to this. People emailed me, as y'all saw the emails, they emailed me and they said, hey, bro, this shit look weaponized and man-made or manipulated in the lab. It does not look naturally occurring. It didn't evolve to do what it's doing. You could just look at the coding. In fact, those that study the coding know, I know YouTube algorithm right now is like, look at this motherfucker. (laughs) We going, man, shut your ass up. Uh, Should I put the tinfoil hat on for this part? (laughs) No. Um, Basically, why didn't Fauci ever pull Trump aside and say, hey, bro, look, I know everybody's talking about this wet lab theory, but I just want to, hey, hey, big bro, big bro, big homie, boss man, boss man, can I holler at you? Like in the hallway, hey, boss man, you got a minute? Man, it's this labs over there. We gave the money to the NIH. The NIH gave it to the Eco Health people, Peter Daszak. Peter Daszak gave it to the CCP. They got it over at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. This shit might have leaked, bro. My bad, bro, my bad. Uh, they might want to come after me, but you the boss, man. I'm over here. I, I'm America first. No, 
He didn't he didn't mention it. He didn't raise his hand in in all them time. They were in a war room. They were like huddling. Hey, bro, is this going to be a pandemic? Do we shut down flights? What do we do? They're telling us we're going to need ventilators. What's up with the PPE? Not once did he raise his hand, and say, hey, bro, um, man, I know they're saying this from a soup. But honestly, man, look, we, we kind of need to entertain that. Maybe. No, he never did that. This man needs to be grilled. And asked, why didn't you say nothing? The same way Jim Jordan, Rand Paul, and others were questioning him. But here's where it gets to the Trump part. Trump got talked out of having a commission like this by his advisors. Uh, Peter Navarro said he was heartbroken over the shit. Trump got talked out of doing it because it was too close to elections and mm -hmm. it was going to be too political. And it was going to just be like shooting yourself in the foot. You starting a commission to figure out what really happened in Wuhan was going to make you look like a crazy conspiracy theorist, dictator, or whatever the fuck. And, um, and you just hating on Fauci and you're anti-science. Because remember, Fauci was painted as the face of science. That's why all the left, everybody, the Democrats were like, oh my God, thank you to high Dr. Fauci. <laughs> Come on, man. That's why. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. You guys are a dual class. Clap for that, motherfuckers. <laughs> um, I wish I knew more about the AIDS, uh, you know, time of Fauci, because there's also a lot of bad stuff to say about the guy back then, but, you know, I haven't looked in, into enough of that. Yeah, ba yeah, that, that's interesting. Or even watch the movie with uh, Matthew McConaughey. But, yeah, unfortunately, Trump got talked out of having this commission because... You know, he was already painted as anti-science. Every time he says something about hydroxychloroquine, look at this. He's trying to kill people with this malaria medicine. Every time he was like, we need to look into UV light treatment. Maybe it, can, it, it acts like a disinfectant. Maybe insert it into the body. He's telling people to sip shots of bleach with no chaser. Like the media was just too busy painting Fauci as the hero and the saint and the face of science. Which, interestingly enough, when Trump gave his speech in North Carolina the other day, he now has a target. He has a target in Fauci. If he just attacks Fauci and be like, hey, the CCP owes us 10 trillion. And if he just attacks Fauci as like science embodied, like the face of science. It's like, motherfuckers, y'all was calling me anti-science. And in his speech in North Carolina, he was like, we were right about that one, too. Oh, <laughs> I have that clip we up. We said it. Because I didn't watch the, I didn't watch it. Oh, we said it. We said it. And we were right about that one, too. Oh, poor Fauci. <laughs> Why didn't Fauci say anything? I believe, he says, we need to all say it in one voice. China, where's my 10 trillion? Give me my Chinese virus. Because <laughs> it comes, I don't know, ask China. It comes from China. Exactly. <laughs> so, interesting times, man. Uh, the book is called What Really Happened in Wuhan. Sherry Markson. She's from Australia. She, uh, it's coming out on HarperCollins. The book comes out in September. You can pre-order it now. Yeah, it's expected September 28th. Very interesting, man. All these names. It's like a novella. This is better than House of Cards. This oh, is, yeah. This is better than any fucking Telemundo novella that's ever come out. I mean, you get to learn about what is the PLA? What is the CCP? You know what I mean? Who are these scientists? How does, how does this money get shifted around? And we don't know a thousand percent what exactly happened and who all was involved or what they were thinking. So let me just say that, YouTube. Um, however, we do know that the wet market theory has been debunked. So remember, all the, all the th members of the TIA, all the patrons, everybody from the Tamal Intelligence Agency. Remember, we're not going to refer to it as the wet market theory or the bat soup theory. We are all going to call it the debunked bat soup theory. Don't forget the debunk. You got to put you got to preface it with debunk. Mm -hmm. The debunked wet market theory, because it is scientifically. Uh, 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 what's the word, man? Like there is no chance mathematically. Mm -hmm. There's no chance in hell. It happened the way they tried to tell us it happened. So the media, y'all need to do y'all's motherfucking job. Y'all need to get on the fucking, like, get on the ball. Stop being the enemy of the people. Y'all have lost so much credibility. Ponte las pilas. Si, cabrones. So, I'm just going to wrap it up with this before we move on to everything else. Um, Arguably, allegedly, Mr. Peter Daszak may have collaborated and participated in a cover-up. Then you got this other dude named Ralph Barrick of the Institute of Virology. You got uh, Fauci's boss, Francis Collins. 
and you have a whole bunch of little scientists over there that like either were whistleblowers or were in on it. So some of them had to bounce from China. I, I, I forget her name. I don't know if it's Dr. Li Min Yang, but she had to bounce from China. She's like, the CCP is lying. This shit came from over there. Any scientist that's familiar with virology can just look at the code and know that out of the thousand coronavirus codes, the closest match is the one from over there. Mm -hmm. So interesting times. Meanwhile, in America, we got our head up our ass and we too worried about should men sit down to pee to not be disrespectful to trans people? That's what the fuck. We're so busy talking about white supremacy is our biggest threat. Your president, Joe Biden, went on TV and lied to y'all. Bold faced lie. Talking about white supremacy is the greatest threat. Who told you to say that? China? So you t- like it. you telling me the white man is a bigger threat than ISIS, than the dollar collapsing, than hyperinflation, stagflation, than Russia, China, um, us, you know what I'm saying? Aliens. I mean, just name some shit. You talking about white supremacy, pinche el cucuy way, the boogeyman. But you know what our leader says, our current, uh, you know, former vice president says? China is going to eat our lunch. Come on, man. Yeah, he's covering up, man. Oh, and why is it that um, when they were, I guess I need to get my, my de- get the wording right on this, but um, I believe a commission or, or some type of investigation was getting put together about getting to the bottom of, of what's up with this. this um, Under Trump. Uh, at, at the end of the administration, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, they, and then, and then, Biden, and then Biden just said, said no, 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 no. Shut that shit down. That's some whole ass shit. And that should be alarming. That should be a red flag. And guess what, y'all? This information may not hit the general public till about a year from now, nine months from now. I don't know. It may not come out to the next election cycle, honestly. It might not ever come out. But everybody tuning in right now, all the members of the Thea, if you are not a member of the Thea, hit up patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Get in where you fit in. Join the gang. Join the community. Don't call it a gang. <laughs> It's, it's a quadre. I don't know what you're going to call it, but join the Red Pill Tamal, Tamal Intelligence Agency and you're going to be so ahead of the curve so that you can know what is what, who is who, and you can navigate your life better and see what's going on so you can act accordingly with your family. All right. So there's a video I wanted to play at the top of the podcast. I'm actually glad that you went on that. Like mm-hmm. you, you really set up what I think this video is going to help, uh, help feel. And it was from the, Na- uh, from the North Carolina Republican Convention. Mm-hmm. All right. It was from uh, over the weekend. And this is uh, Mark Robinson. Uh, he's, uh, I believe he's, uh, what is he? Uh, damn, he's some kind of lieutenant general, I believe. Okay. It's not in the description. I thought it was. Mark Robinson. All right. And uh, it, it's basically about how America needs to be like the first responders of 9-11. We have to run to the trouble. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. Let, mm-hmm. It's, we'll see how much of this you know, I'll listen to. But I heard I, rumblings that it was a really, really good speech. So I is, figured, is he from Georgia? I think I heard this. Yeah. Did you heard it already? I, I heard it. Uh, go ahead. Do All right. Do uh, think. We'll watch it at the same time because I hadn't seen it. The greatest example of that I saw and witnessed it firsthand on television was during 9 11. People running away from those burning buildings, running away in horror. We saw policemen and firemen run into those buildings, basically run into their deaths to go help others because they saw trouble and they knew that they were needed. That's got to be us in this day right here. We've got to run to the trouble, folks. And what is the trouble? The trouble is the Biden administration that is seeking to turn this country into a socialist hellhole. The trouble is Antifa that wants to roam the streets and beat you into submission. The trouble is Black Lives Matter. It claims to care about the lives of black people, but it's turned a blind eye while violence in black communities are taking lives at a genocidal rate. They've turned a blind eye. That's where the trouble is, and that's what we've got to run to. And we've got all the right in the world on our side, and there ain't no reason to be afraid. And there ain't no reason to not take the challenge dead on. Because I'm going to tell you who we come from, folks. We don't come from some weak, jellyback, spineless people. That's not who we come from. None of us. And it doesn't matter what color you are, what nation your folks hail from, how much money you got, 
We all share the same name. We are Americans. And at Bunker Hill, there was Americans. And at Fredericksburg and Gettysburg, there was Americans. And at Iwo Jima, raising that flag on Sarabachi, it was Americans. And at Porkchop Hill, there was Americans. At Quezon, there was Americans. And on 9-11, there was Americans who ran towards those burning buildings. That is who you share your heritage with. You do not share your heritage with a weak and ineffective people who cower at the side of trouble. You share your heritage with a strong and brave people who are determined to hold on to their freedom and for the freedom of future generations. Guys, it's time for us to stand up and be that generation. It's time for us to stand strong and proud and remember who we are, that we are Christians, that we are Americans, that we are Republicans, and that we are conservatives. And as long as we stand as the vanguard of freedom in this nation, freedom will survive here. And not only survive, it will thrive. So guys, it's time to put on our packs. It's time to fix those bayonets. It's time to get ready, because we got a fight on our hand. And our fight is not for us. It's for all those generations that's going to come behind us. Let's save America, folks, because if there is to be freedom in this nation in the future, it is only going to become at the behest of the Republican Party, the grand old party, the party of freedom and equality, the one that always has been and the one that always will be. God bless you all. Thank you very much. God bless the great state of North Carolina. Bruh, I'm going to listen to that <laughs> before, before any time I hit the stage. I'm turning on Mark Robinson. We are Americans. And, and we ain't messing with none of these jelly back ass boys. That's that. I hadn't heard it, man. I heard, I saw it tweeted and people posting it. Some people sent it to me and I was like, all right, that's a great way. And the way somebody put it was like, this will make you want to run through a wall and, and bite into a ribeye. Man, I just want to do some burpees right now. <laughs> I feel like you already did it. Is that why you're sweating so hard? Did you go to I the gym? Tr- I, no, dude. I was trying to clean up. Oh, it looks I clean was, as hell I in was here. getting stuff out of here. I'm hiding shit. I'm putting shit in the house. We, got, we just did a pop-up, so the vehicles are still full of like the containers of stuff and racks of clothing and usually when everybody sees Chingo Blaine doing this on for the first 15 20 minutes of the podcast is because he just got back from workout sometimes he i don't know man i i run hot i, I don't know what it is i don't know if it's my thyroid i don't know something's hyperactive but when it's hot and it's humid and i'm moving i'm putting the bay in that it's because you're a red-blooded american yeah because we are the grand old party <laughs> The last beacon of hope. We would defend freedom as I'm sweating. You know, and that sounds so idealistic. I know people will, since this is on YouTube and it's on Patreon, somebody might clip this and take it out of context or whatever, which I understand. I totally get it. But when you hear that speech, you can't be an American and not get a little riled up in a good way from Yes. It. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. And and that that is why that is why we stand up for what we believe, man. You you could disagree with us. You don't have to see shit the same as us. You can frame things different. You can have a different filter on how you view the world. However, you cannot say that people like Rob and I are spineless and we don't stand up for what we believe in. So that's one. That's a hill I'm willing to die on. Is I've always been a stand up and I've always had a damn backbone and I've always spoken out about what I believe, even though those opinions evolved. <laughs> even though I might change my mind. Yeah, but whenever you had those opinions, you stuck by them because that was what you believed. That's what yeah, you that's were... that's what I felt Yeah, that's time. what you felt, exactly. And uh, I didn't see, and I didn't. we didn't play the, uh, I don't know what it was, commemorance speech or something that Kamala gave at the Naval Academy not too long mm. ago. Mm. But it was super, I saw clips of it, it was just super like inclusion and this and that, and the whole, like the Naval Academy is just like so unmotivated. Had this been what they heard at their graduation? They'd have been like... I'm glad I signed up. Exactly. Let a motherfucker try to test America, bitch. So I, Freedom, ho. So many things just don't make sense. And I brought this up to my soul the other day just because she sends me, you know, sometimes we'll all send each other random articles or whatever. And something that she sent me triggered the uh, the term uh, NPCs. You know what NPCs are? Non, what is it? Yeah, non, uh, non-player non characters. Okay. So, <laughs> for Cal- I didn't even send her the article, but there's a whole like... You know the singularity meets the matrix. You oh, know the simulation. Yeah, all the all the, all, oh, all that right. It, it's it. a whole article about simulation and NPCs or whatever. And uh, I kind of you know, gave her like a little clip of it. And she was like, "I'm done. I don't want to think about this right now. I don't want because it's when you hear stuff like that versus stuff like what's going on on the left, it makes you feel like a lot of people that are coming, uh, not coming out, but have been out 
talking about this party is like, this is what we needed, this is what America needs. They all kind of, not all, a lot of them sound like non-player characters. Like, they're just people who are mm. like, and this is where we need the, the full hat, right? They're just kind of put there and maybe planted there, maybe by UFOs, by Elon Musk, I don't know, <laughs> to completely just throw you for a loop. You know what I mean? They mm. seem like, are they really having their own conscious thoughts or was that programmed for them to say? Mm. I'm just saying, that's a little conspiratorial, a little woo-woo, but... I like how he said... um I'm paraphrasing. Basically, he was like, the left is trying to turn America into a socialist shithole. Yeah. And, I mean, that's kind of the filter that I view shit through. You yeah. Because... You can hear it from people coming from the border. Yeah. and, and Exactly. People from Venezuela and stuff. And and um, and um, I, I know that I have my filter. And, and then there's a thing called cognitive bias, mm -hmm. which, which could force me to find something that's going to help prop up my belief and and reinforce it so i understand all that i may be wrong however based on everything that i'm seeing like hey we don't want them to do a forensic audit and really see if everyone that voted was legal and and see if you know a bunch of ballots weren't dumped off at one of those drop boxes overnight and the chain of custody got got broken or whatever um it, it just like for example some of them people uh, officials in georgia that are, were involved in elections, instead of them saying, hey, yeah, come on down, take a look, and we'll see that Biden really won, mm -hmm. or, or that these Democrat senators and, and you know governors and stuff really won. Instead, they went and hired high-profile criminal lawyers, criminal defense lawyers. That's what they did. Yeah. Some, some, of them, some of them are ready to plead the fifth. So when you look at all that, it's kind of like, yeah, it does seem like y'all cheating. Y'all trying to, like, demasculate everybody y'all trying to do this uh postmodernism shit where nothing means anything and there's 168 genders and 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 boy i was telling my mom yesterday i was like mom and she voted for biden i believe i was like mom um you know that uh they got biological boys like i said un pelado i'm telling her in, in spanish <laughs> mom usted sabe que un pelado que era pelado hace seis meses, dice, ahora soy vieja y se puede pelear con las mujeres. Ay, no, eso no está bien. And I felt like telling her, that's what you voted for. That's, <laughs> Mama that's, bling. That's, that's your side. That's your side is in favor. You know what I'm saying? And because we, me and my mom hung out yesterday and I was just like trying to red pillar. Yeah. Little by little. I'm like, amá, usted sabe que... Dude, I hang out, <laughs> when I hang out with my mom, I do that, but I don't know what it is. Uh, she... Is, your mom your mom riding with Biden? Not at all. Oh, okay. And and that's the thing though. Like my mother did come from Mexico. My mother did cross the river. Uh -huh. She, you know, back in the whatever it was, 60s, 70s, something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly. But she sees the difference in the times of 60s and 70s versus you're, you're now. You're getting you're getting specific. Like she got the pliers. She cut a hole in, <laughs> in the fence at the time. Dude, I, I don't I don't know the full story, but I know that it wasn't uh by what I don't know, whatever right. port of entry you might She wanna... dug the tunnel. <laughs> She's like uh, She juked the meter. A hundred percent. A few times, actually. Sorry, a go, few go, times. On, go on. No, it's just that like she but she sees what's going on and I actually visited him yesterday and it's I dude, I grew up with Bill O'Reilly and Tucker Carlson and Hannity and all of them playing nonstop. Wow, look at you. And to, to a point, though, when you're young, and I understand this, you have this, you know, the, the phrase is like, when you're under 25, if you're a, uh, and I've said this before, if you're a conservative under 25, you have no heart. And if you're a, a Democrat over 35, you have no brain, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I understand that. And we, we're seeing this now, and I'm seeing this now even more and more as election cycles go, pa go by and, and people come up, you know, to prominence like AOC versus, you know, whoever it was 15 years ago. They tug at your heartstrings, right? They make you feel like the social causes are really something that they're fighting for, and it's it's what we need, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like because they're hiding the data. Exactly. It's like Kamala in 2019, a senator saying that the United States has always had their arms open to people who are fleeing, you know, whatever, whatever. Versus yesterday or the other day, don't do don't, not don't come, come. Mm -mm. don't come, please, do not Sorry. come, mm -mm. yeah, do not come. So when do I say come. something to my mom, she'll be like, "Nah, pues eso no no está bien," you know, and she'll kind of break it down for me before I even say anything, right? It depends what it is. It could be immigration. It could be something else you gotta have, you gotta sample that do not come <laughs> and right. make that one of the pads yeah uh it, it's I, I it's just uh it's hard to get that point across to a lot of uh older you know hispanics but i, I think a lot of them are getting it and clearly mccallan shows it there's a joke in there somewhere about do not come <laughs> it's got it could be a meme where it's like where it's like like the one that uh the canelo one where it's like when she wraps her legs around your waist it's like i'm coming my friend i'm coming 
Did you see that one? I don't think I saw that one. Oh, it's Canelo in the ring. They're interviewing him, but it's like five seconds. So at the top yeah. of the meme, it'll say when she has when she wraps her legs around your waist or something, and then he's and then the video Canelo's like, "I'm coming, my friend. I'm coming." <laughs> you know where my brain goes? I want to make a really filthy joke where it's 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 Biden saying some crazy shit about some underage girl, and then Kamala, don't don't come. Do not don't come. come. Do not Fucking come. Fucking old freak. Or it could even be like. Um, Come on, man. <laughs> it, could, it could even be like a, the meme could be like um, when uh, this is how nice well, you, when you in it raw and it's starting to feel good or something <laughs> like that. And then and then you got Kamala the video about do not come, do not come. Oh shit! It could be those guys we played last week. Hi, Doctor Fauci. Hi, don't doctor. come. Do not come. Do not come. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, man. I didn't grow up with Hannity and Tucker Cross and all that uh, Bill O'Reilly and stuff like that playing in my house. Um, my parents were immigrants. They didn't, they didn't, they, they were just like, no, los pinches republicanos y nos van a chingar, mijo. Y, no, la, la economía se va a joder, mijo, porque, you know, los republicanos, you know, <laughs> stupid ass shit. Meanwhile, I'm living in this Democrat run inner city yeah. where you're always going to have crime and stupid shit like that. And, I'm not saying any teachers went out of their way to t tell me I'm a victim, but you just, through the ether, through osmosis, you somehow get this inferiority complex because you live like in an all brown neighborhood and your middle school is all like minority. So you start to absorb this rhetoric. You have no idea that it's Marxist. Yeah. You have no idea that they're teaching you to be a victim, but through the ether, you're just absorbing this like, oh, it's because we're brown, eh? Hey, you heard Julio got pulled over? Why, fool? A hey, racial profiling, doc. It's not because <laughs> motherfucking had no license plate and he he was high and, and turned without the blinker. Yeah. Nah, fool. Hey, that's how it is. And raza, fool. And then you watch Hollywood movies. You watch Boys in the Hood and all this stuff. And it's like, man, we're just, it just, it is what it is, fool. Like, we're living in America, dog. And it's just as bad as South African apartheid, homie, because, because Ice Cube and Boys in the Hood, fool. It's like, it's all about gang violence. And you got to join. And then you watch America Me in sixth grade or some shit. You're like, hey, fool, we're going to go to prison. We're going to join a fucking Mexican mafia shit. And we're going to fucking stab each other. And it's because we're brown, fool. And because there's no opportunities for us because the gringos are racist. And then you go to college and then they reinforce it there. Yeah. Sociology teachers are telling you that, uh, Everything, everything in the world is racist. Everything is perpetuating differences along the lines of class and gender and race and ethnicity and, and you're brown. And we, have, we need to have a minority group. Even in high school, man, at prep school, this is more of like human nature, but like I gravitated towards the minority kids. Like that, that became the crew because they were also from inner cities or big cities. They were also like on scholarships and they also like rap music and hip hop. And so we just had more in common. And then we created this multicultural alliance, the MCA. So now it's like you're just self-segregating. You all sit at the same lunchroom table. You hang out. You want your homie to be your roommate. And, you know, it's like you're never really integrating. Yeah. So that's very unfortunate. <laughs> Yo, that Mark Robinson video, man. Amazing. Yeah. It's Amazing. good shit, man. Kamala went to Guatemala. Do not come. This mofo hasn't even gone come. to the border yet. <laughs> we, need, yeah, we need that key and peel. I don't want to be in the gulag, but you know. Remember that key and peel skit, skit, oh, yeah. sketch? I told her. And I was like. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only way to describe her, man. I don't want to end up in the FEMA camp, dog. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the only way to really describe what's happening right I'm going to be over there with Mark Robinson with my bayonet <laughs> running towards the trouble. I'm going to be down there with Kwame Brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Kwame Brown for sure. Um, so just briefly, Kamala went to Guatemala. Uh huh. People arguing with me in the comments. They're like, isn't this what you wanted, though, Mr. Republican? It's like, no, I didn't want kamala to go to um central american countries or wherever taking your hard-earned hard-earned tax dollars handing it over to perhaps maybe corrupt government officials it don't ever really get to the guatemalan people it doesn't really solve anything they're just pussyfooting around some shit like yeah. you're not really addressing the problem at our doorstep like there is a crisis at the doorstep like 
the ranchers down there will tell you there's people on their property. They going through their refrigerators. You know what I mean? There's like women who live in Del Rio who husbands got to work somewhere else. People going through their house, digging in the fridge, like people tearing up the ranchers fences. They're trafficking women and kids. It's a shit show. The Border Patrol can't even handle everything that's coming their way. They're catching people from like 30 different countries. And meanwhile, she wants to fly over all that. Didn't even do a pit stop. Didn't even go out there. Hey, Rio Grande Valley, we working on it, but I got to go to Guatemala real quick. She lands in Guatemala. They greet her with go home. Trump won. (laughs) Mind your business. Get the hell on. All those kind of signs. Yeah. And then she gave some little speech talking about do not come. Mm -mm, Do not come. And it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, we're going to do what we can or, you know, we're, we're fighting to help you stay in Guatemala and make your, your life here a better place. I think by, that's great. By, by giving your um, corrupt officials money. Right. I think that's a great, that's a great, that's a great concept, right? That's a great idea. But the, the only problem that I personally have is that you don't see that type of effort when it comes to the problems that are already existing right here. Hey, man, let's just take care of our shit, and then later we'll definitely help anybody that we can. But it's just like a poor person that has no money wanting to help the world. You got to do for yourself before you can do for anybody else. You know? I mean, goddamn, Kamala, what are you thinking? Like, I wonder how MSNBC and CNN are covering this story. They're probably like, and Kamala... I don't think they are, honestly. I don't know. What would they say? They'd be like, "Um, Vice President Kamala Harris is addressing uh, Guatemalan issues... By going to give them y'all's money, American dollars, hoping that it's going to trickle down and hoping <sighs> it's going to stop the influx, even though y'all just invited everybody. I saw a meme where uh, I don't know who this lady is, what movie it's from, but she's like the one that does the wink. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, do not come. Yeah. No, <laughs> dude, dude. I love that actress. She's so funny. Oh, she's my God. She's a comedic God. actress, but it's actually from the WandaVision series on uh, Disney+. Plus. It was uh, the Marvel series, oh. and I, we watched it the other day, and when it got to that scene, I was like, holy shit, I know where it's from now. Uh, yeah. I need to watch that. It's pretty good. It's pretty interesting, but you're not, sure. really Mar- you're not a Marvel fan, so, you know. I got to get on it, man. I got to get on it. Whatever, bro. So, yeah, we don't know what's going to come out of that Kamala Guatemala situation. Actually, since we're talking about the media, though, and how, what, mm-hmm. how they're covering it, I have another video that I didn't watch, wanted to watch it with you for the first time, of how your boy, uh, and just the media in general. Who, uh, who is it? Who's my boy? <laughs> Brian Stelter. Oh, that motherfucker. And how, they're, how they are covering the media, right? Mr. This, Potato Head. This is, what, this is what's going on. So, let's see. The... This is from MRC TV. Bootlicking CNN's uh, Stelter embarrasses himself with gooey, sacky interview. Let me see this bullshit. So this is what's going on. Meanwhile, oh, Mr. Potato Head, face ass, jelly back ass boy. Busy summer ahead. Infrastructure, election reform. What does the press get wrong when covering Biden's agenda? When you watch the news, when you read the news, what do you think we get wrong? Well, look, I think some of our muscles have atrophied a little bit over the last few years, and there isn't a, a lot of memory, or recent memory, or long, longer memory on how long it takes to get legislation forward, or how messy mm. uh, the process of negotiating and the process of getting legislation across the finish line. There are times in your briefings where you seem so comfortable, then there's times where you seem frustrated by... Don't, donate to our Wi-Fi, uh, <laughs> patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. So I want to know what the job is like versus... Ooh, I'm going to have to hardwire every time now. Oh, we were not hardwired. No, no, right no. I, I, I figured the hardwire would just be for interviews. This is what um, you expected it to be like. Well, I'm a human being, so even though uh, every day I... Ch- the stupid little smiles. God, little lame ass, cuck ass, jelly back ass boy. Try to be completely even keeled. And always my objective per the president's direction is to pre- treat people with respect and take questions and provide accurate information. That's my goal every day. But I'm also a human. Uh, and sometimes when you're answering the question, uh, saying the same question a tenth time or when a question uh, more, more likely the things that get under my skin or when a question, the premise of a question is based in uh, inaccurate information misleading information uh, that can be frustrating I, I try not to show it too much try not to let people see me sweat too much but occasionally I have a moment of humanity well, so those questions that are based on falsehoods they come from brands like Newsmax which uh, you know it does sometimes get called on in the briefing room I know a lot of liberals don't want Fox News to get called on I think they should be but I know a lot of liberals a lot of Emirates don't want it so why do you call on Fox News and Newsmax 
You know, you used to be on this side of the camera. You were a CNN commentator in between uh, your time working for the Obama administration and now working for Biden. What did you learn here? What did you take from CNN and, and how does it apply to your job now? I mean, a lot. One, you know, when you're a CNN commentator, a commentator for any network, you do spend a lot of time uh, sitting on a set, uh, being prepared. Fuck that noise. <sighs> Mr. Potato Head. That, that actually, ironically enough, whatever little clip they're showing was when she was like talking about Biden's cognitive decline. You she, know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was just saying like he's uh, not that energetic or yeah, he's kind of sleepy. Yeah, not kind of not all there or something like that was yeah. exactly what she said. <sighs> anyway, this fucking conveniently nonsense um, conveniently doesn't get brought up enough. <laughs> AOC's abuelita, uh, AOC wanted some clout. And she wanted some pinch of sympathy. And she's like, it's all President Trump's fault. Look at my abuelita's dilapidated little house in Puerto Rico. Ancestral home. Ancestral. What the fuck does that mean? That it's been passed down, you know, for generations. And That means y'all been po all these years. <laughs> <laughs> y'all ain't broke. That means y'all ain't broke the cycle. Not yet. Let me find out your abuelita was smoking up that money. Well, shit, she took that, that phrase serious. Like, it ran in my family, so it ran into me, and then she ran away from the family and didn't give him the money back. And she wanted clout. She went and got her a Tesla. And she was like, my pobrecita abuelita. Two apartments, one above a Whole Foods. Yeah. And it's like, my pobrecita abuelita. And you hear, like, the little, like, Puerto Rican the violin. The Coco, violin. the Coco guitar, the grandma playing on the Coco. Yeah, yeah, it's literally like Coco. <laughs> yeah, Coco. Abuelita Coco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> abuelita Coco is in her ancestral dilapidated house in Puerto Rico. And please, please, help me, please. I am AOC. It is only Trump's fault. It is only Trump's fault. It is fault of the Trump. El, el Trumpa. Si te my abuelita in Puerto Rico. She made her poor. Why well, you sound like Speedy Gonzalez? It's supposed I know. to be AOC. I'm like, I don't know. That's <laughs> that's how she sounded to me. Yeah, you're right. And then uh, this cat named Matt Walsh, who, um, what is it? What? Daily he, Wire. He's on Daily Wire. He was a uh, trollanthropist. Trollanthropist? Yeah, he, he, said, he said he's a trollanthropist with that one. So he started GoFundMe. He's like, okay, little mama, you want some clout? All my followers donate to... Uh, AOC's abuelita in Puerto Rico, in Puerto Rico, as they say it. And they they gathered a hundred racks. Yeah. And then um, GoFundMe was like, um, we've reached out to the um, AOC. What's her last name? I don't even know her last name. Uh, Cor Cortez. 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 Ocasio Cortez family yeah. does not want to accept your cien mil dólares. Um, these are American a dollars. Billion four hundred million. Excuse me, a trillion four hundred. That's how much money they <laughs> that's raised. How, that's literally how much money. A billion trillion four hundred million, and they turned it down, bro. So, all right, let's expand on that a little bit because I thought that was genius on so many levels. And for me, I just like seeing the back and forth of the people, right, who are genuinely upset that and I forgot what they use, like maybe virtue signaling to the you know the rights party that we're gonna spend time you know raising money for this, but you can't you know X Y Z fill in the blank. It could be whatever. Mm. But that tactic of starting that GoFundMe and genuinely raising real money for what's supposed to be a real cause and a real person gets shut down, gets shit on by the left because what? It made you look bad? Because you should have done it yourself? You, you saying the left, like people on Twitter got offended? Oh, on, yeah. On their behalf? Oh, yeah. What were they saying? Like, you're donating in a smart aleck way. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Which isn't, it's not false. Well, then stop bragging about being po. <laughs> Right? If I, if I hopped on Twitter like, man, man, I got this flat tire, bruh. Man, the pop-up, man, it was hot. It was hot at the pop-up. I still got to do this and that. And now I got to pay this storage unit fee and this and that. Somebody might be like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Here's, your, here's $100. Shut up. Quit crying. <laughs> and then what am I supposed to do? Hey, uh, I was just complaining, but not, not for y'all to, you know, not for clout. Oh, jelly back ass boy. <laughs> We talked about Fauci. We talked about we talked about Peter Daszak a little bit, which I'm sure those are going to be reoccurring uh, themes in, in in people over the next couple of months. Man, how do you feel that the mainstream media has covered Fauci's emails? Dude, I don't think they've covered them. I honestly, I know I say that as if I'm being flippant and jokingly about it, but <clears throat> and this all, is this isn't all his emails, right? This is no, just no, no. one set of three thousand. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there was another set of like the same amount, and then and then a lot of this shit's redacted. Right. And here's my biggest argument. Sure, there may not be an email in there that's gonna send Fauci to jail. There's not gonna be like a smoking gun, you know. Even though arguably some of it is kind of like, man, they were trying to tell you this, but you weaseled around it by saying, "Oh, it's too long to read." Mm -hmm. 
or some stuff you just forwarded it with some gain of function PDF attached talking about this might be what we're doing. So my point is this. He's he's been a bureaucrat, he's been a government official for the longest. He's not dumb per se. So if you were involved in a cover up, if you were keeping your mouth shut in the White House, not mentioning, uh, hey boss, um we were working on those in the lab and I I signed the check that went here and went there and my bad. Never did that. Never answered uh, Rand Paul's questions or Jim Jordan's questions. So my point is, he's not going to be sloppy with the emails. Like, he's smart. You're not going to incriminate yourself with the emails. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ain't going to go all out Hillary with the shit. So What's funny, too, is to just think that this is what was released, right? This is what was considered, I guess, unclassified. Imagine the things that the the government did not willingly give up. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, just think, kind of just chew over that. Like, hmm, wow. I, I guess my point is, although you may not see an email that would raise any red flags to you, it doesn't mean that he didn't know where that money was going, what they were doing with it, who was involved, and why didn't you ever tell anybody? Why you didn't, Actually, they said he went to Europe and told some of those people. Um, what was he telling them in Europe? Shit, there's so much news. He told the people in Europe... Uh, that that it may have come from a lab. Meanwhile, he's telling us in America that there's no way. See, the, the good thing, and I'll, I'll uh, paraphrase uh, the great Eddie Bravo, who was on uh, Sam's show, was on um, Tinfoil Hat just a couple days ago. It was one of the newest episodes. I love those two together. I love Eddie Bravo because he's so out there. Yeah, granted, he's a flat earther, probably partially seriously. Hey, and shit. Right. I don't know. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so he made a great point. These days, we don't know. Go ahead. Right. No, he said a really good thing, a really interesting phrase where he said, the red pill phrase is so, so strong and fascinating because once somebody licks it, takes it, completely consumes it, there's no going the other direction. You never, you never get red pilled and then go the other way, mm, right? You always go from the left, swallow that red pill, and then you can't unsee these things. Once you woke, you don't go back to sleep. Yeah, you don't go the other way. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like, it's true. Like, anybody that's kind of... any Everything we've talked about here, if you go back six months worth of content, like, if you're new to the show, start at the beginning. The very first, maybe one, two episodes, Chingo talks about the reason this show kind of started. Like, the epicenter of it was on Twitter, where those clips got taken out of context, blah, blah, blah. And they, now, they try to make me look like a coconut racist sellout. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The way the media does and the way they edit things and condense things and leave out all the context, no mm-hmm. captions, no nothing. And that's what still happens this day. It's happened for forever on uh, TV, right? On legacy media. But more and more people that tune into this will take the red pills and they'll never go the other way again. It's just impossible to. Yeah, and that might be a, a testament of how the human brain works. Like, for example, I already see Fauci as a weasel. It's going to be hard to unsee it. Yeah. Just based on the information that is coming out. And y'all more than welcome to fact check, contextualize. Um, where I'm, I'm not speaking for Rob, but me personally, I don't personally believe Trump is perfect. I don't agree a thousand percent with every little single fucking thing he ever does or says or anything. Yeah. Do I believe he's a stronger leader that we need right now? Yes. Absolutely. fucking lutely um, I feel that, like, for example, what's, what, even what's happening with the uh, Republican Party, how you got the rhinos, establishment people mm-hmm. that are like, no, don't do an audit. And <laughs> then you got the MAGA people that are like, no, we need to be nationalist, populist, America first. We need to worry about the citizens. We need to worry about our security. We need to get our head out of our ass and worry about defense and and prosperity for the people like that's the movement where like homeboy mark robinson was saying like that's the shit i'm getting behind like it don't even got to be trump like let's just say trump decides he don't want to run 2024 or whatever or let's just say he don't come back in 2021 due to these forensic audits i just want a strong leader that's going to be able to stand up to china Mm -hmm. stand up to you know, uh, any enemies, foreign or domestic, because it's a lot of them. And it's going to call out things like critical race theory, call out shit like Marxism, call out these bullshit Antifa people tearing shit up, um, doesn't want crime on the rise, isn't like, because like, this is what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing a lot of times is a lot of these local city officials are soft on crime, tough on cops. Like, y'all giving the cops hell, and y'all being nice as shit to criminals. So... Yeah, and I think uh, the way Red Bravo ended that little rant about the red pill and like never going the other way is that it's it's about being awake, not woke. Mm. 
And I was like, oh, all right. They're probably high as hell. But yeah, that was a great point. Yeah, because the woke word has taken leftist connotation. It does, 100%. Yeah, it's like... Uh, people, it's not applicable anymore. It's people that believe that, you know, these woke people, they're the ones that believe that there's 185 genders. Right. Um, that Demi Lovato don't got brain damage <laughs> from all the dope she done smoked up. Um, it's people that believe Mark Robinson's speech wasn't all that. It's people that believe that what Kamala's doing is actually fucking effective and helpful. Going to these other countries, taking money over there. Barbosa. <laughs> you know who else wasn't a big fan of Fauci? <clears throat> I don't think we ever talked about this gentleman before, but the inventor of the PCR test. He just died? I'm just, what the? F- he died just before COVID. Just before, he died in August of last year, Chingo. Or I'm sorry, August of 2019. <sighs> mm, From that, pneumonia. Is that not fishy? Yeah, exactly. We this, never talked about this. Is this is the guy that called out um, uh, Fauci. During the AIDS? That, yeah, yeah. That he was saying, this man don't know the difference between a virus. He's like, this man will get on TV and, and, lie, and to, lie to your face. Yeah, yeah, him. <sighs> he died in, I believe it was August of 2019. R.I.P. Did, did I post him yet on the What Did He Say page? I think I was going to post him last night. I think you did. I think you actually posted that, that old uh, once, video. Once before. We got to repost it. Let me look. I don't think it's ever been on the feed. I think you might have posted it in a story. But either way... I got it. I'm about to post it right now. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no. I mean, either way, if you've never... Uh, what, the, what was his name? Chingo, it's on the paper. Oh, um, this guy. Kurt... K- oh. Yeah. Kerry, Kerry Mullis? Kerry Mullis. So he, he created the PCR test, which, I mean, we've all heard about it and how they use it to find, uh, you know, COVID positives and other information about DNA and how it replicates and you spend it a certain amount of under heat, it replicates even more and you find out this blah 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 about dna and it's been broken down in a way to the common folk like myself when you first hear you're like okay that makes sense and then you hear the guy that created it and like that's not what that test was intended for you could find anything if you heat it up enough spin it enough blah 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 talks all this kind of shit about fauci you know decades ago uh still pretty outspoken about science as the years went on and then dies just before the lockdown hit wow they were they were doing uh, the the pcr test thing that's how they were getting a lot of false positives. Right. Yeah, during, exactly. During the Rona. Because he said, that's not what that test is for. Like that, that kind of result isn't what these tests are supposed to, to find. And I forgot what exactly they are supposed to find, but it wasn't that. Bro, I had the clip. What the hell is this damn clip? <laughs> Jeez. Okay, I'm going to find it and then I'm going to post it. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true international effort to pressure. <laughs> that's what I had last night. True international <laughs> pressure. Because I ran out of my Delta 8s. So I had churr, 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 pressure. No, all right. R.I.P. Kerry Mullis. We're going to post something about him on the What Did He Said page. That is weird coincidence. So what is up with this NFL pride shield? Well, Chingo Bling, you didn't see it? Maybe you can read the, their tweet to uh, our fans here. Chingo. Man, they made everything with the rainbow. All the logos got a rainbow on it. The Texans got the rainbow too? Damn. NFL tweeted, On June 1st, happy Pride Month. Hi, Dr. Fauci. (laughs) The NFL is proud to unveil our new NFL Pride Field. (laughs) Do I get canceled for that? That that was an accidental lisp. To show our support and solidarity with the LGBTQ plus community. We stand with LGBTQ plus people this month and year long with a commitment to our players, our fans, and our staff to live proudly and authentically. Here's my question. Do gay people give a fuck? About what these, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals and the Detroit Lions and, and the, the Colts and the Raiders and the Saints and the, and the San Francisco's and, the, and the, the Seahawks and the Steelers and the Dolphins and the Cowboys. <laughs> You're just going to name yeah. all the fucking teams? And the Atlanta Hawks. and the, Do they care about the Baltimore Ravens having a rainbow going through this shit? Atlanta Hawks is basketball, but keep going. <laughs> but let me point this out. My, my bad, Falcons. Let me point this out. Yeah. Here's where it gets interesting. All right. If you notice... It is no longer just a rainbow, Rob. Look, look at the colors. Do you notice anything? Well, dude, yeah. Because in the video, and I don't remember what video it was, they say that black and brown people encompass the LGBTQ community. All right. Look at this, look at this version of the rainbow. This is the 2021 version of the rainbow. They've added the baby pink and the baby blue onto the rainbow they they didn't squished it in right mm-hmm. so it used to just be rainbow right it used to just it used to just be lesbian gay was that bisexual lgb or whatever right it, sure it was just rainbow they added the trans flag to it mm-hmm. now they also added the black and brown trans to the rainbow so they done crammed it up with about four or five different rainbows mm-hmm. 
that to me is what's really to me that's like the um what is it the dog that ain't barking like that's the significant part of this is they've they've morphed the rainbow they've evolved the rainbow they've crammed in several other rainbows they've made it about I wonder, that's what I'm saying. I wonder how gay people feel about this. Well, when you consider they were probably being stuffed in lockers by these football players. Oh. <laughs> that's fucked up, dog. When they were in high school. Yeah, you better take that back, bro. <laughs> you, you don't get us canceled. <laughs> but look at how they added the black stripe, the brown stripe, the baby blue, the, the light pink, and then you get into the, to the old school rainbow. Interesting. I'll, I'll, what are some of these uh, comments? Someone said, glad to see you guys doing... Is this a bot? Glad to see you guys doing such a great thing regarding such a hated community. Who hates gay people? I mean, who... And what community? There's like seven communities who, on this shield. Who still... I guess, I guess there's some haters out there still. But I'm like, sure, but look, this NFL shield has, like you said, a whole bunch of different communities in there. And then it's just for a month. So do gay people feel like, bitch, get off my nuts. You're just trying to like corporatize a community and you're only doing it for 30 days. So get off the boo-boo. You know what I'm saying? Like, how about you don't do this virtue signaling and just maybe find some positive things to do throughout the year, as they've said. But it's almost like it's almost like it becomes counterproductive to give everybody a month. For example, Hispanic Heritage Month. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? (laughs) Who the fuck cares? I'm gonna boycott that shit. Like, who cares? Who cares? Hispanic Heritage Month. Bitch, we're American, ho. We are American, and we want the same shit y'all want. The same shit all these other groups and communities want. We just want to live prosperous and and have um, safe communities for our kids and what have you. We just want freedom. That's it. That's it. Stop trying to divide everybody. To me, that's racist. You can't think about what the left does, man. The left is always race baiting. They always trying to divide us. They with this critical race theory shit. They're making people victims. You know what I mean? They want to like bring up old shit. We done move past. Yeah. Um. Meanwhile, they're not acknowledging Memorial Day properly. They're not talking about D Day. They're not talking about what's truly American. They want to divide us and segregate us. Like, okay, and your month is coming up, and your month is over. Now it's this guy's month. Oh man, there was a. Not great, great in the opposite uh, direction. Video about, um, I forgot what Anchor, I'm going to try to Google this real quick. Anchor describes uh, Antifa on D-Day. Did what? you see this video? Let me see this. I got to try to find this. Who the fuck was this? An Anchor? Was he a left MSNBC? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I don't know if I can find this on the, NFL. On the fly. It's just kind of, I don't know, man. I don't know how effective it is. I don't know what the gay community gains. What do they gain from it? What are they doing? Maybe they're cutting a check somewhere. But it, it just seems like virtue signaling, man. How about, how about this, how, this is an idea. If you want to be inclusive and nice to gay people, um, treat them like regular people. Right? Yeah. Just treat them like ordinary fucking people. It's like we don't care what you do on your free time or who you do it with. Treat them like regular people. Stop trying to make everybody a victim. Stop trying to segregate and divide everybody. Just say, hey, fellow Americans, that's it. You love America, I love America. Yeah, se acabó. It ain't got to be like, well, when's my month? <laughs> when's bearded people month? I'm sure there's a day for it. Don't get, don't, don't get yeah, it I mean, twisted. They do, they do have a day for everything. That's true. But, but corporate America, and the funny thing someone pointed out online was that um, a lot of companies that are like, transnational international Mm -hmm. their american logo during june is all rainbowed out right it could be like uh like general electric or somebody and then that same company in like an arab country they left that shit alone they put no rainbow on that bitch you know what i'm saying so in other words these corporations are conveniently picking and choosing where they're virtue signaling at let me see this Who's, what's this guy's name? I forget. He's been on TV forever. I know. Oh, Tom Brokoff, jelly back ass boy. The fight against fascists. Project are out with a reminder to all. Who is Antifa? They stormed the beaches of Normandy, parachuted into the French countryside, and gave their lives to face down and fight back against fascism. They took down Nazi machine gun nests. Tore apart the Third Reich's strongholds. Liberated Antif- concentration. Same Antifa? <laughs> Liberated I, machine gunness? Italy. 
Belgium, Holland, anywhere Antifa saw fascism, they fearlessly and relentlessly... Yeah, send in the purple-haired lesbian down into that trench, see how it fascism works out. was defeated because of patriots like these. Proud Americans who knew that the fight Depends against what being used for, was really. not simply a battle between opposing nations. She does the, you know, like Peter Pan bangerang, folds up her legs, humanity. becomes a human bowling ball. <laughs> a war that isn't nice, but cannot be lost. A war we still fight today. Now, oh, bruh, bruh. It, was, it, was from, it was from a crowd of clips. Yeah, somebody else okay. cut this up. MSNBC. Oh my God. I was like, what? <laughs> So for those that are just listening, they were, okay, it was a clip on MSNBC where they're basically showing like, what was that, World War II mm-hmm. footage of, um, you know, storm in the beaches of Normandy or whatever, what have you, right? I guess that's D-Day people right yeah. there. Like you, you're showing soldiers and you're calling them Antifa. So you're comparing the people that are burning up American businesses and streets and communities in Portland and other cities. You're saying that these are the one and the same? How fucking irresponsible is this? That, that alone, man, the FCC, mainstream media needs to come with a disclaimer. It needs to come like the same way when you smoke cigarettes and, mm. or alcohol. It needs to say like, if you're pregnant, don't do it. You might, kill you. you might get birth defects. The shit leads to cancer. That shit leads to brain damage. It could be like, it can make you dumber if you watch this. How do they get away? I can't believe I haven't heard about this. I can't believe this isn't a bigger story. And that's why I listen to RPT. Because <laughs> Rob's on here and he's schooling me. Dude, that's so, it's just so retarded. Uh, I don't I feel like other outlets can't even cover it because it's so dumb. The audacity to compare. Somebody needs to do a re-edit and show these idiots burning up Portland. Well, uh, funny enough. Somebody so, did one? I'm sure, because underneath this one, there this was a longer Antifa clip. This is Antifa, and one. wherever they saw fascism. Uh, I got it. I know it's in here. Fucking assholes, bro. Let me see here. Oh, hang tight. Stand I'm 41. By. This is the shit that get my blood boiling. I'm going to need another cold shower. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is like the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. This needs to be a clip from RPT. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. And we've seen a lot of dumb stuff on the show. They're comparing the idiots burning down Portland with these American soldiers fighting Nazis. MSNBC, shame on you, man. Yeah. And if you still watch that punk ass channel, man, you just need to know that like you're just consuming entertainment. I don't know what you want to call it, but it ain't news. What value are you getting from that network? All they do is deflect and it's all misdirection. What are we pulling up, Rob? I got it. So, come on, man. Easy. Calmate, calmate. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Hey, hey, listen to me. Man. Get the jab, man. Get the jab. Lincoln Project uh, video on Antifa today. Who is Antifa? In 2020, they stormed the city of Seattle and created the autonomous zone Chaz, <laughs> but then changed the name to Chop because they needed stuff. Stuff like cafe lattes, gluten-free bread, and super cool sunglasses. <laughs> In the last year and a half, all over this country, everywhere Antifa saw fascism, they relentlessly annihilated it. In Minneapolis, they liberated a black firefighter from his bar. In New York, they freed shop owners from their goods. And in a well-to-do suburb of Detroit, this soldier told his mom to shut the fuck up, stupid bitch, when she asked him to please wear a jacket because it was getting chilly out. Fascism was almost defeated because of patriots like Antifa, but fascism still exists today, and the fight against it is still strong. Anti-fascism isn't just a cable news talking point. It's an American ideal that should be memorialized because it was paid for in blood and skateboards. <laughs> this is why you got to stay mm. strapped. You don't know, you? sometimes you don't realize you mock something, you don't realize who you hurt. Yeah. <laughs> this is why you got to stay strapped, man. You out there having dinner. <laughs> That's uh... And these Antifa motherfuckers pull up. Let me ask you something, Rob. Yeah. When, when these people were doing this mass destruction, um, on, on American cities and American businesses. Mm-hmm. 
why didn't we just go in and shut it down? Like, I guess Trump was trying, and then the mayors, like Ted Wheeler, were like, no, leave us alone. Yeah, we don't want or, your help kind of thing. And or, now he's now he's really cracking down, right? Because they're attacking his home, basically, his residence. And plus, election shit is over and Trump's out. So you can't be like, hey, Trump, get, keep your Gestapo out of here. Right. I remember one time, man, this, this lady I know from Seattle, um, I tweeted her like, yo, is everything cool? Uh, like... I'm seeing this stuff out there. And she was like, uh, yeah, it's crazy, but it's only going to get worse with Trump's Gestapo coming in. And I'm like, okay, lefty, <laughs> I can't fucking talk to you anymore. <laughs> I was just trying to see if you're okay. Still like, alive. I, I was trying to see if she was going to be like, yeah, these fucking idiots are fucking shit up. And I wish Trump would send some people down here. And I wish our punk ass mayors would allow the help so we could wipe this bullshit out of here. Um, it To me, it's just ridiculous. that That shit wasn't just cleaned up in an hour like yeah and i mean it, had he done something just speculation let's just say that he did send in the national guard or whatever they would have turned it on him yeah it would have been one of those like he's enforcing martial law he's a or, dictator yeah basically that kind of stuff that's what he wanted he wants antifa to be out there so he can send in his gestapo yeah man it again this is one of those things where you're red pilled you see that it makes no sense it kind of makes you upset like you said and what do you do? Like, it's, who, the, it's the narrative. Who's still in favor of this? A lot of people, People apparently. are like, yeah, they're doing a good thing, bro. Really? Yes. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter or anywhere, Instagram, and if you believe these assholes are contributing to society or the well-being of anybody, don't fucking follow me. Boycott me. Do not, do, I don't want a dollar from you. Don't follow me. Don't go to none of my shows. Don't listen to my music. Nothing. Just forget I exist because I don't have nothing to do with you. You cannot be that fucking stupid. And it kind of goes to that post about the, uh, I guess it was a McAllen mayor where somebody said, uh, what did they say? Oh, small town, you know, it's a small market. And people were, were replying back like, like how McAllen's no. big, you dummy. The, and not only, not only is McAllen sizable, the Rio Grande Valley within itself. Huge. <sighs> huge. huge. Yeah, it's huge. When you add up Brownsville, West Lackle, Mission, Far, all that Donna. Donna, yeah. Add it all up. Boom, 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 boom. That's a metropolis. It is, it is. Um, people talking about also, like, I think in that same thread, you got to stop with the the red and the blue, right? The side. I, I've heard that for years. I, at one point, I was probably like, yeah, that totally makes sense because this two-party system is really rigged and, you know, the lobbyists and blah, blah, blah. And there's, a lot, of, there's a lot of weak-ass rhinos. A lot of weak-ass, all politicians, right? Yeah. So... I understand that, but when this is the game that's been played for as long as it's been played in the greatest, you know, civilization, I guess it's arguable, some people disagree, in the greatest country to ever exist, you still have to get people involved and interested in how this game is played and how this system works in order for it to ever change anyway. So if you say, you know, fuck, give up on the red and the blue, just, okay, are you just saying just like, okay, just take a step back and let it unfold and not do anything? When people say that, like two birds of this, or two feathers or whatever the fuck it is of the same bird... Okay, I get it. Yeah, but they would say two wings from the same there bird, you go. Yeah, bro. They don't care about us, bro. You still have to put forth the effort of figuring out and finding out why it is that it's these, you know, two, uh, what is it? Uh, two wings of two the same wings bird. Two wings of the same bird. They always say that. This is stolen land, and it's two wings from the same bird, I say. <laughs> Look, if you're in your 20s or 30s or whatever age, and you have kids or want to have kids or whatever, you want to leave something that you can impress upon your kids so that they can grow up and have some input in the system as well. If you just keep saying this two-party system sucks and do nothing about it, what are you really doing? I guess that's just people that voted for Biden. And it goes back to the local just, thing, right? Yeah. It goes back to your mayors. It goes back to your judges. It goes back to the people, the representatives themselves, who send, you, we send them up. You know, if you want to say that we uh, send them up to, to D.C., this big holy land for the country. The swamp. Yeah, it starts with your locals. It starts with the small red and blues, right? Those red and blues in your local areas make a big difference there. And then go to the federal level and make a fucking national, you know, change, hopefully. But if you just say stupid shit like that over and over again, it's just like, well, I can't. I can't have this argument. I can't have this debate. I can't have this argument. Well, I can't acknowledge it. I can't. I still can't believe. I, I don't know what that man's name. Tom Brokaw. One of them dumb motherfuckers. I don't know. I need to see the unedited version of how he teed up that clip. Like I just feel like there's some context missing. Like y'all want to see some bullshit. Like it's almost like he was like bullshit of the week, and then he. Uh, how do you compare these fucking idiots, these soy boys, and like they said, the purple-haired lesbians <laughs> that are going down there with skateboards, burning American flags, disrespecting shit, breaking shit? And you're comparing them to the heroes of World War II? <sighs> I 
I mean, I'm really starting to think they put something in the water. Mm. I don't know if that fluoride shit is true. I don't know y'all's pineal gland. Like, I don't know how how bad is the public school system that you could believe that these pendejo soy boys tearing shit up are actually on the right side of history. I don't know. I'd have to find it out so we can play it next time. You would think there's more context, but he kind of just set it up like, remembering, you know, I guess the original Antifa, what it really stood for. And it ain't the same. They just copied the name, I guess. Um, Because these assholes in Portland believe that everything American is fascist, I guess. That's what they're trying to undo. On top of, uh, let me just wrap that part up with this. Not only is it retarded (laughs) to compare those dumbasses to soldiers, not only is that stupid, right? And a weird way of thinking. And furthermore, here's the the real kicker. Arguably, we're witnessing a cultural Marxist revolution in our country where this Marxist rhetoric, I mean, they're eroding our borders. They're destabilizing our currency. Um, They've got us divided. It's an information war. Half the new, most at 90% of the news is fake. It's an information war. We're literally under attack. We're in an economic war. And these people are useful idiots. You got these people disrupting and, and they're hijacking people's movements. Some of them out there talking about, yeah, man, we out here because George Floyd. No, you're not. You little punk with a skateboard. You don't yeah. give a damn about no George Floyd. You stupid. You don't give a damn about black people, bro. There was a clip actually just the other day of somebody at one of those w- rallies or whatever that are tearing shit up and they're like, and remember, and he looks at the camera, he's like, well, I don't remember his name, but, and then he says something else. And then someone tells him his name is like, yeah, that's his name. Remember that name. Remember it. And he keeps saying that name because he didn't remember it originally when they asked him the question. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. So they're useful idiots and they're all, they're all part of this cultural Marxist revolution that's happening. And if you notice, all the BLM leaders are having to step down because shit doesn't hit the fan. A lot of black folk ain't buying it no more. They're, no. Not, they're not buying it. They're like, nah, bro. You, that, it sounded cool as a slogan, but y'all full of shit. 500 so, yeah. million people have watched what I've done out of my basement. Uh, who is H3H3 podcast? I was, okay. So you don't even know who they are, which is great. Um, and we might save that for Friday. Maybe, okay. I'll, 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 let me ask the fans here. If you want me to break this down, I'm sure people that are big into YouTube know who H3H3 is and the controversy that they put them, not controversy, they put themselves in. They called out Rogan, uh, made a made a huge segment on their podcast on YouTube. So originally it was like a big YouTube channel that turned into a podcast. Called out Rogan and just smeared the shit out of him for um, when he had Whitney Cummings on. She pulled up a video of her backyard shows during the lockdown that she was getting a bunch of shit for. They were mm. all tested. They were still, you know, whatever, being safe. He, Rogan happened to see somebody that was wearing a mask outside. He said, who's that uh, dummy wearing a mask outside after being tested? Turns out it's this dude's wife who's his co-host on the H3 podcast, ah. right? They made some jokes. And uh, when he's like, oh, she's, you know, she's great. I love her or whatever. And they move on. That was it. Yeah. He catches wind of it, and then he does this whole probably like a 30, 40 minute segment on his podcast about Rogan, just shitting on him. He's so dumb, you know, stupid fake alpha shit. I think he's gay because he's always talking about, you know, whatever mm, alpha shit. Mm. And then Crowder gets it and he sees it. And he's because the, the main part of that video, too, is that uh, uh, Ethan Klein saying, Hey, uh, you know, the CDC is this governing body that's supposed to tell you what to do. You don't even have to think about it, bro. That was that's his what ta- the H3H3 person That was his said? take on it, yeah. And Crowder was like, that's the dumbest thing. That's not way to live any part of your life. Not think about it, bro. So then Crowder does maybe a 10, 5, 10 minute little segment on it. He sees it, does another one on Crowder. And then Crowder today did a long one on them about, and he's like, this is the last time I'll mention your name on my show and breaks down why it's so idiotic. And he says, square up. Yeah, pretty much, right? Uh, but he invited him on on, on uh, Louder with Crowder or whatever. And it was just this long thing where it's funny because it's so meta. Like you see him playing Rogan on his show and then Crowder and then Crowder's playing him playing him on his show. It was a crazy YouTube dumb shit. But it, his show, is the H3 show, used to be big. It's still big. But it's telling kids who are pre- impressionable, right, who are watching this that like don't think critically basically. Don't think for yourself. Just listen to the government. The whole idea is like we have these big governing bodies like, oh, are, you're supposed to trust them. Why, why would you not trust them? Why would you question them? Like that was the whole thing. And they're just... They, let, let me guess. They're Democrats. 100%. And so they, they just, trust the government. They want the jab. 
They just used to do a lot of slapstick, stupid kind of videos, calling out other YouTube channels and just doing silly, wacky, dumb, brainless shit. They mm -hmm. would be just junk TV, um, but on YouTube. And um, it's just, he got dismantled by it. So anyway, if you guys want me to play the long version of those videos for Chingo to break down on the Patreon episode on Friday, let me know and I'll set it up because it's a lot of different clips. Interesting. Yeah. So when we were at the pop-up, shout out to everybody who stopped by the pop-up. It was the uh, Hip Hop Vintage Flea Market. It's uh, really cool. Everybody's out there selling like throwback vintage selena shirts um world series shirts jordans like it's a whole other scene like okay. i was probably the oldest person there so this lady stops by my booth and I, i'm already like low energy dude because it was so hot so i'm just sitting there like trying to preserve my energy preparing myself mentally that we had to break down two tents mm -hmm. and racks and all this other crap and she's like hey um and i'm like go up to shake her hand no yeah pandemic and she does a little pound and i'm like okay cool whatever yeah i'll do the pound too and then she's like um i'm one of the people that went back and forth with you online uh something like that and i'm like okay <laughs> and then she says um so i wanted to talk to you um you know about some of your views and i'm like oh my god it's too <laughs> fucking hot for this shit lady and then she says um so I know how you voted and I take it that you don't want to get the vaccine. And I was like, um, many people that I respect and listen to and look up to, they've gotten it. And I think it's just a case by case. And, you know, you got to do your own risk management assessment. Me personally, I'm going to wait it out a little bit longer. You know, I don't really see the need. I'm, it, bitch, do you not see how much information's coming out? <laughs> I'm trying to get to the bottom of what happened in Wuhan. Right. And then she's like, so she's trying to come at me about the vaccine. Then she wants to talk about guns. And she's like, well, I don't think everybody needs to have an AK-47 or whatever. And then I'm like, uh, okay, what about an uh, AR? She's like, um, those are weapons of war. It's all talking points. Those are weapons of war, and you don't need to have them. And I was like, well, in the Constitution, it says, you know, we should all have, you know, we all have the right. You know, just worst case, we got to buck up to the government or mm -hmm. something like that. And, and she's just like, well, you know, you don't need them. And, you know, that's just too much. Those are weapons of war. I was like, okay, well, I'm concerned personally with cartels posting up over here. And God forbid, I was like, I know we don't want our police to be militarized, right? By no means. However, when, when the thugs got more, more guns than the, than the police, you might want to, you might want to militarize. I was like, God forbid we get to a point where you're begging for your police to get militarized. So she went on about vaccines, guns. I can't remember what else. And then she's like, oh, look, and here's my husband. Hey, honey. And he looked like Brian Stelter from CNN. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this explains a lot. <laughs> this explains a whole lot. Did she later then go pump gas across the street and they get punched in the back of the head by this big black <laughs> dude that walked up to this lady? And she'll probably be like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I deserve it. I'm, I des I'm because of my uh, white Tino privilege. Mm. Who knows? She probably would have took the beating and been like, I'm sorry. It's because uh, I'm, I'm not an ally enough. My silence was violence. I'm sorry. My silence was violence. I wasn't a white ally. But yeah, but then a lot of other people, though, mostly everybody. There was only like one other person that I know that was at my wife's booth next door. And um, he was like, oh, he said he said something like, oh, Chingo Bling shirt or something like that. And she's like, oh, he's over there. Oh, he's right there. And he said something like, I don't want to talk to him. He voted for Trump. And my wife's like, he don't want to talk to you either. <laughs> She's like, she says she had to fight back everything she really wanted to say. Of course. And then, but 99% of people are like, hey, play it. Like, thugged out dudes. Yeah. Like, all kind of Mexicans like, hey, man, I agree with you a thousand percent. You nice. know, like, same shit like at the shows. Hey, man, people need to wake up. Or like, you know, uh, listen to your show, man. Love what you're doing. Keep spreading the word. Um, I agree with you. We got your back. Dude, when you take the time to listen to the show, right, and aside from the jokes we'll make from time to time, we're still trying to keep it funny and entertaining, everything that you say and have stood for since changing your mind or coming to a new realization is all about bringing up people and their communities, right? Just bringing them up. Yeah, that's I, I, it. I want the best for everybody. None of it has ever been the actual Antifa video that we saw a while ago where it's like, yeah, defund the police and go tear shit up and go light shit on fire and your kids are going to be in danger, but fuck it because whatever social cultural, you know, Wait, world we're you're, on. you're saying I never stood for stuff like that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, nah. The, no matter how lefty I was in the past, I don't think I would have ever fell for that. I yeah. probably would have been like, why do you got to tear up businesses? Up? Right. 
But, you know, I we've already went over this, but yeah, I was, you know, Mr. They Can't Deport Us All. You know, I have a big heart for immigrants, being a son of immigrants, and I still do. Yeah. I still think that all those people that arrive in the shore, uh, at the border, you know, should plea their case, wait their court date, preferably come through a legal port of entry. You know, I know that now, because otherwise, with this rhetoric that we're, that I was once promoting, current day... All it does is enrich the cartels. It puts men and women and children and, you know, people in danger. You got human trafficking, sex trafficking, people dying. It's just not a good look. And you could arguably say that I'm saying what Kamala said in Guatemala. Do not come. So, yeah. And I, if you want to call me sellout racist, then call Kamala sellout racist too then. Um, I didn't put it on the list because I just started seeing it today where there's like all these centers that are, you know, housing the immigrants are being reportedly seen as, not seen as, what are they there? I saw an article, I'll just put it like this, where the caption was literally uh, rape centers being shut down, you know, and that, that was the headline of the article. So I was like, okay. What? What happened? Yeah, exactly. So let me just real quick see if there I can find. so much happening. Uh, thousands of human children said they were sexually, okay, so this is from the New York Times. Um, take it with a big grain of salt. Yeah, but it's actually better that we cite the left because if if that's their headline, yeah, you know, it, it didn't come from Newsmax or Fox, New York yeah, Times. It's not OAN. No, thousands of immigrant children said they were sexually abused in U.S. detention centers. Report says. Okay, so that's more of that's coming out. What we'll do with it? What we'll, we'll, you know? What you will? Maybe look into it. I'll look into it tomorrow. We'll talk about it on Friday. But does it say what states, what centers, where, when? Let's see. Let's see. And then uh, Soul is about to podcast after this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bu- 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 Make sure y'all check out Her Lounge podcast. That is my wife's podcast. And we're still taking suggestions from uh, patrons to see what other show we can add to our media umbrella. Perhaps a patrons-only call-in advice show where we give a Google voice number and you can call in. Yeah. Um, shout out to all the patrons. Also, if you want to sponsor the show... Right, what's your email, bro? Uh, Redpeltamales at gmail.com. Yeah, if you want to sponsor the show, I mean, we don't want to flood the show with commercials and stuff like that, but more than anything, we are patron-funded. It is a subscription model, business model, that protects our freedom of speech in case we get deplatformed for saying crazy stuff like it might have come from a lab. A lot, all of them are saying along the border wall, so they mm. are in any specific cities. But I'm sure more information will come out throughout the week, and we'll be able to talk about it on Friday. And that was on New York Times. We'll look into that. All right, guys, that is all we have for today. Tune in. Uh, spread the word if you enjoy what we're talking about. Um, join the chat, man. Join the community. Hit us up. Get the Patreon app. Download it. Uh, but first, you got to join. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales and join the Tamal Intelligence Agency. Hey, I got a clip of Trump uh, down in McAllen. Want to hear it? Yes, sir. When, when was this? Who's number one with Hispanics? One. Trump. Yes, you told Trump. us that earlier. <laughs> well, play that again. <laughs> Who's number one with Hispanics? One. Trump. Yes, you told Trump. us that earlier. <laughs> the working class Mexican Americans are speaking up. Yeah. Sass. Y'all take care. Holler at you later. Peace.